Welcome back everybody. Today we are going to learn how to shade a sphere. So shading is the use of value to give the illusion of form or depth. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a 2D circle and we're going to shade it so that it has the illusion that it is a 3D sphere. You can either freehand your circle or you can find something circular nearby to trace, maybe the bottom of a cup. Make sure that it's about the size of the palm of your hand. We don't want to be shading any tiny little circles the size of a quarter. So now that you have your circle drawn, I'm going to go ahead and draw in our light source. We're going to pretend like the light is hitting our sphere in the top left corner. So that means the top left corner is going to be light. That's where the highlight is going to be and the lighter values. And then as we get farther away from that light source, it's going to get darker and darker. So now what I'm doing is I'm drawing some contour lines. That means it's following the shape of the circle. And I'm drawing these lines to separate out the sphere so that I know where to place my values. So go ahead and draw some contour lines with me on your circle that are similar to the, similar to the ones that you're seeing here. So as you can tell, since the light source is coming from the top left corner, the very bottom section, the part that looks like a crescent moon down at the left right hand corner is going to be the darkest value. So we're going to look at our value scale and we're going to use the darkest value on our value scale to sh start shading in that bottom left, bottom right hand corner. And it's gonna, it's going to look like a crescent moon because it's following the contour of the circle. So the edges are both curved. So go ahead and apply a lot of pressure, apply some multiple layers, and try to get that dark value. And obviously I'm speeding this up, so feel free to press pause and take your time and then press play again when you're ready to see the next step. Once you have your darkest value added to the bottom right hand corner, then we're going to look at our value scale and we're going to add the second darkest value next. So remember on this one, you're not going to apply as much pressure. You might not apply as many layers as you just did on your darkest value. So go ahead and see if you can create a value that's one shade lighter than the one that you just did. And remember, this is also going to be shaped kind of like a crescent because we're following along with that shape of the circle. And remember, we want our shading to be more of a gradient than a value scale. We want each value to blend seamlessly into the next value. So think about how you can be blending each value together as you're shading. And once you've finished shading your second darkest value, you're going to move into your next section and you're going to do your third darkest value. So on this one, remember you're going to apply a little less pressure, maybe not as many layers. And remember, we're, we want it to be a gradation. So see if you can try to blend it into that other value that's right next to it. And again, this one is still going to be a crescent shape following that contour shape of the sphere. Now you're just going to keep adding lighter and lighter values in each section as you go until you get to the very last value, which is white. 
and you're going to leave a little white highlight on the top. As you go, remember to try to blend each value into the value before it. And when I see these, I should be able to tell that you have at least four different values, that you've shaded at least four different values on your sphere when I look at these. All right, I noticed that I needed to add a little bit more value down towards the bottom of mine. So I went back and added a little bit more. And then I've got that highlight up there at the top, which is completely white. Now what I'm doing is I've wrapped a tissue around my finger and I'm gonna go in and I'm starting at the lightest value. And I'm using circular motions to follow that contour of the circle. And I'm blending my values together so that way you don't see my pencil lines as much and it's more of a smooth transition from each value so it creates more of a gradient. We also want to practice good craftsmanship as we're practicing shading. And we want to look out for those smudge marks or pencil marks on places of our paper where we don't want them. So if you find any smudge marks, go back and erase those. And now I'm going to go ahead and label the different parts of my sphere. You don't have to do this on your paper if you don't want to. This is just to help you out. Um, that brightest spot on our sphere is obviously the highlight where the light is hitting the sphere the most. And then our medium value is going to be called our midtone. Then down at the bottom where we have our darkest value, that's going to be called our core shadow. And there's one more part to this sphere that I have yet to label, and it is going to be down at the bottom. And at the bottom, I'm actually going to be using my eraser to take out part of that value because that is going to be a reflected highlight. And this is where the reflection of the table or whatever the sphere is sitting on, it's reflecting a little bit of light back on to the bottom of the sphere. So it'll help your object to look a little bit more realistic. And for this part, I blended and erased until I got a reflected highlight that I thought looked good. Now we're going to move on to the cast shadow. Since our light source is in the top left corner, the sphere is blocking the light from getting to the ground. And so it's going to cast a shadow on the ground. And the shadow is going to be elongated, so it's gonna be in the shape of a really skinny oval. And it might even peek a little bit over there on the left-hand side but it's going to be mostly on the right hand side. When we start our shadow, we're gonna start with our darkest value that's going to be closest to the sphere. And then we can change and we can do kind of a gradation and we can move on to lighter values the farther away from the sphere we get. 
And that dark value of the shadow will help to complete the sphere. Since we have our reflected highlight, the shadow helps complete the illusion of the sphere. All right, now that we've done our value and gradation scale and we've practiced shading a sphere, I'm going to teach you four more ways to add value. And this time, instead of doing a six-step value scale, we're just gonna do a three-step value scale. So go ahead and start sketching out squares, or you can use a ruler if you'd rather use a ruler. And I'm going to just do three squares in a row I'm going to do four different categories. So three across and four down. The first new way to practice value that we're going to practice is called hatching. And this is where instead of blending different value tones by coloring in the whole square with your pencil, you're going to be using your pencil, or you can use a pen, to add lines. And these lines are going to be basically parallel lines. And the closer they are together and the thicker they are, the darker your value is going to be. So we're gonna make our dark value by adding lines that are really close together. And we're just, doing three value types for these. So you can choose a dark, a medium, and a light value. Your medium value is going to have lines that are a little bit farther apart. And then your lightest value will have lines that are really far apart and maybe even super skinny lines. Another way that you can use value or create value is by using cross hatching. And this is just like hatching, but instead of lines all going in the same direction, the lines are going to be crisscrossed. Just like on hatching, the closer you put your lines together, the darker the value you're going to get. And the farther you put your lines away from each other, the lighter the value. So see if you can do a dark, medium, and light value using cross-hatching. Another way that you can add value to your artworks is by stippling. And stippling is when you use a lot of small dots or marks right next to each other. So to get your darkest value, it's obviously gonna take you a little bit, a little while. You're gonna add a lot of little dots right next to each other. The closer your dots are next to each other, the darker the value you're going to get. And the last way that I'm going to show you today of how you can add value to your artwork is by scumbling. And scumbling is just like scribbling, but more sophisticated. What you are doing is you're just adding a lot of random squiggly marks to build up the value. And this is probably my favorite because it feels really free. You just add 
squiggly marks until you've got the darkest value that you want. And then you're going to apply less pressure and spread out your scribbles or your scumbles on your next value. And then your lightest value, your scumbles will be a little bit farther apart and you're go not going to apply as much pressure. All right, you are now finished with your shading practice paper. I hope you learned something new. I'm excited to see these when you turn them in. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more tips on how to art.